Split brain or colossal syndrome is a rare condition in which the two hemispheres of the brain are disconnected. The link between them is severed to a certain degree. Patients with split brains do not show any significant difference in function from healthy individuals. However, you can prove with specific experiments that there are two brains working independently without recognizing each other. Split brain syndrome is primarily caused by deliberate surgical separation of the corpus callosum, typically used as a final option for severe epilepsy. It can also result from conditions like stroke, infection, tumor, ruptured artery, multiple sclerosis, or incomplete development of the corpus callosum. Despite the syndrome, patients usually maintain their memory, social skills, and motor abilities acquired prior to its onset. They can learn new tasks involving independent finger or hand movements but face challenges with tasks requiring coordinated hand movements. Their eye movements, however, remain unaffected. Patients with split brain syndrome encounter difficulties in processing sounds, smells, and odors, often finding it challenging to name odors presented to the right nostril. However, certain symptoms of chronic disconnection may show improvement as time passes. The syndrome was first studied by neurobiologist Roger Wolcott Sperry in the 1960s, who discovered the specialized functions of the left and right hemispheres. People with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, process traumatic memories differently compared to sad, non-traumatic memories, which is why they often feel as though they are reliving these experiences in the present. With the help of MRI scans, scientists revealed that non-traumatic memories activate a brain region called the hippocampus, which is known for storing long-term memories. On the other hand, traumatic memories activate the posterior cingulate cortex, or PCC, which is a brain area involved in internally directed thought. The hippocampus organizes and contextualizes memories, whereas the PCC is more associated with self-awareness and daydreaming. The greater the activity in the PCC region, the more traumatic the experience will feel. The brain processes traumatic experiences uniquely, often resulting in long-lasting effects. When a traumatic event occurs, the amygdala, the brain's alarm system, activates the fight-or-flight response, signaling danger. This leads to the release of stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, heightening alertness and response. The hippocampus, responsible for memory formation, is impacted, sometimes leading to fragmented or disorganized memories of the event. Event. Simultaneously, the prefrontal cortex, which manages emotional responses, may become less active, making it harder to regulate emotions and reactions related to the trauma. Over time, these neural responses can contribute to symptoms of PTSD. Daydreaming is not a sign of laziness, but it can actually benefit our brains. Research suggests that allowing our minds to wander helps the brain rest and organize information more efficiently. It enables access to memories and information that may be challenging to reach during focused cognitive activities. Daydreaming acts as mental exploration, facilitating the creation of new connections between ideas and concepts. When we daydream, we often simulate scenarios, explore memories, and connect disparate ideas, which enhances creative thinking and fosters innovative solutions. Daydreaming also provides a mental break, reducing stress and allowing the brain to recover and restore its cognitive functions. Scientists studied mice and found that when they daydreamed or relaxed, their brains rewired themselves to improve memory and learning. Even after removing a visual image, the mice's brains still showed similar patterns of activity, suggesting that they were remembering the image. Over time, the brain's response to seeing an image became similar to that during daydreaming about it. This means that daydreaming strengthens certain brain connections, making our responses to things more efficient. The part of the brain called the default mode network is involved in daydreaming. This is a network of brain regions that remain active during rest or simple tasks, such as reading or thinking. It also regulates sleep, dreaming, and cognitive processes, functioning as our internal mind.